today on City Cash Chicago. It's National Small Business Week, so it's time to show some love to our favorite local businesses. We also talk in public libraries and hearing some of your deep thoughts on Deep Dish. It's Tuesday, May 2nd. I'm Jacoby Cochran, and this is what Chicago's talking about. Welcome back to the Mike Lee, producer Carrie Shepard and producer Simone Alisea. Hello. Hello. Good morning. National Small Business Week is an opportunity across the nation and especially here in Chicago for us to show some love to our local gift shops, our local restaurants, the the places we like to, to spend time and spend money in our neighborhoods. But even as we were talking earlier today, my first question is like, what is a small business, right? Especially we just heard election season. I feel like every single person was talking, we got to support small businesses, got to support small businesses. When I really try to define what that looks like, I feel like I have a good sense of it. But I went to the Small Business Administration website. Uh, And honestly, I got a a few of my questions answered. Uh, The SBA standard for small businesses are based on three factors. Your company type, so basically what you do. Your average annual revenues, what's in them pockets, uh, and the number of employees, how many people work there. And the answer really is it depends on what you do. Mm. So based on your industry, you're sort of given a, a, a SBA business code. One example I saw in the article said new car dealers ships is based on how many employees they have. So it's 200 or fewer full-time employees. But if you're a used car dealership, that's based on how much money you make. It has to be less than $27 million. Most of the small businesses that you walk into, especially the ones in my neighborhood, people are super thankful that people are shopping there because we're still yeah. in a pandemic. Uh, and so, Carrie, what are the numbers about how small businesses in Chicago are faring as we're moving uh, through the pandemic, you know, three years in? So last year in 2022, the Chicago Department of Business Affairs and Consumer Protection issued over 6,100 new licenses. So those are licenses to new business entities. The renewal, license renewal rate last year of almost 85 percent is comparable to pre-pandemic pandemic levels, according to the BACP. Granted, this is all businesses in Chicago, not just small businesses, though it still seems like a positive trend. People are starting more businesses and the businesses that exist in Chicago are, you know, pretty much uh, still surviving uh, and, and at a rate more comparable to prior to the pandemic. Yeah, I think I think also it's just important to maybe like look also at maybe how some small businesses have adapted. So the Chicago Land Chamber of Commerce, they do an annual small business survey and they're actually seeking responses for their 2023 outlook now. But in 2022, these are just some quick things like, you know, they focused on uh, how small businesses increase their, you know, what attention to digital performance. So it said that, you know, more than half of the small businesses surveyed, they sell products or services online. Um, 66% increased their digital platform. And I don't know about you guys, but I see this as well just for some of the small kind of maybe like retailers, jewelry or clothes shops that I go to, vintage stores. Um, A lot of them started selling online, um, whether it be on Etsy or whatever, uh, because obviously we were going out less, so we're doing less popping into businesses. Just quickly, too, um, there was this survey by SCORE, and SCORE is like this national group that mentors small businesses. And a big concern for the small businesses they talked to was uh, hiring. Just one stat, eight in 10 small business employers in this report um, said they had challenges with regard to hiring new employees, and nearly half said it's difficult to retain existing staff. Uh, Simone, what is the city got planned for National Small Business Week? So the BACP, as Carrie mentioned, and they do this all year round. They do lots of webinars, lots of uh, sort of resources available there to help small business owners deal with like business planning, legal stuff, licensing, you know, what are the financial regulations around your business? Um, And so this week, 
they are targeting that uh, with this attention on um, National Small Business Week. Um, so we've got webinar. There's a webinar today, this morning at 10 from the Small Business Administration. Uh, you know, you mentioned how like the SBA has um, specifications for like what kind of small business you mm-hmm. are. That's where you find out what that is, how, you know, what kinds of resources can you get from the feds, um, that kind of stuff. Uh, the BACP, along with the Public Health Department and the Department of Buildings, are going to do a webinar tomorrow afternoon about city inspections. Um, We've heard about building inspections, health inspections. I'm sure that is something that's really stressful if you're, especially if you're a first time business owner, right? What what is this going to look like? What is my interaction going to be with the city? Um, And then there are a few other things going on a Spanish language uh, uh, webinar on Thursday and on Friday. BACP is going to introduce you to all the other resources they give you all year round um, and the various ways they help small businesses. Uh, so if you are a business owner or you're thinking about starting a business, they also have resources you know, for sort of first-time entrepreneurs um, just getting into it. It's a really good place to start uh, Start looking. The reason is really important is not just for the, the these are the places that we like to go and we like to visit, but a small business classification means access to certain types of loans, type of grants and contracts. But it wouldn't be Small Business Week if we didn't show some love to some of the local places we like to visit in our neighborhoods. Carrie, what's a place you want to give some love to this morning? So I um, live, as you guys know, and I've said many times on the podcast, I live sort of right between Ukrainian Village and... Um, Humboldt Park. So I want to actually get just give love in general to the stretch of Chicago Avenue between Damon and, you know, maybe Western, maybe California with so many Ukrainian businesses. There's Kasha's Deli. There's Ann's Bakery and Deli. There's Trizub Ukrainian Kitchen. Forgive me if I'm saying that incorrectly. Um, And, you know, and then Rich's is a corner store we go to. Uh, These are just places that have, you know, that all the many Ukrainian residents can get um, authentic food and pastries. And I think that's and then also introduce some of us who haven't eaten that food. That is um, that is the that's why it's so important to live in a global city like Chicago, we get to learn so much about all these, you know, all these different places just from home. So I'm giving a shout out to all the Ukrainian village uh, local places. Beautiful. We we got to drop a little a little patch in the show notes that that puts a, a list of some of these places for y'all. Simone, uh, moving to your neighborhood, what's the place you want to show some love to? Yeah, I live up here on the north side, sort of uptown, uh, almost Edgewater. Um, But uh, also we've got Asia on Argyle uh, right down the street from me. It's where I end up Mm. probably most of the time that I leave my apartment. (laughs) I end up on Argyle somewhere. Um, And I got to give a special shout out to two spots, uh, and that's Don Pablo's Empanadas, uh, Chilean Empanadas. Such a great guy. Uh, I get the same thing every time, uh, Classica with steak and onions, and it is just delicious. And then uh, First Sip Cafe, also on Argyle, which is, we don't have, a, mm. we actually don't have like a ton of coffee shops within walking distance, like a coffee shop where you can sit and like chill for a while. First Sip has great vibes. It's like kind of witchy and dark and there's plants everywhere. Um, and they also do like really great craft drinks, like really cool, like, Vietnamese style coffees and matcha. And I often get a golden coffee, which is the turmeric with espresso. Um, so if you like a really, oh, yeah. if you like like a really fancy, like kind of, kind of drink, that's, that's definitely the place to go. And like I said, great vibes all around. So those are, those are my shout outs uh, for, for my neighborhood. Simone getting us hooked up with some, some great food spots in her neighborhood. Uh, and I want to give a shout out to a few places over in Harper Court here at Hyde Park that have opened in one in the last year and the other in the last two years. Uh, one being Surrey Designs, which is this mother-daughter jewelry store over in Harper Court that I bought a few birthday gifts at. Um, it's owned by Linda Cochran and Ashley Smith. Every time I go in there, the mom is just like, I'm going to check the family tree to see if we are related because I, 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 I just really think we are. And then right now, Next door is Recycle Modern, which opened in the last year by Sherry Curry, uh, who lives in Kenwood. And that's where you can get like art, home goods. They sell uh, recycled furniture. Um, I've bought a few paintings from there and a few prints. Um, and, and then they got these really cool like artistic throw pillows in there. We actually heard from a listener as well who wanted to give some love to one of their favorite small businesses in Beverly. Hi, uh, my name is Ann. I'm from Beverly calling uh, to highlight local businesses. I wanted to highlight 
Beachy Sweet Cafe and Angie's Sunflower Coffee on Western. Yeah, Beachy Sweet is one of the few places you can get really delicious, really healthy food in the neighborhood. And Andy serves really great coffee. They're both black-owned businesses, and they're really, really nice businesses to have in the neighborhood. Um, thanks. Bye. She's talking about Ain't She Sweet Cafe uh, and Andy's Sunflower uh, Cafe and Coffee, in case you missed that uh, in the voicemail, which I think at, uh, at least one of those places we mentioned in our Beverly Neighborhood Guide. Yeah, that's nice. I love when listeners and readers, which happens so much, especially in the Hey Chicago newsletter, write in and just like want to like shout out their like the local places in their neighborhood, mm-hmm. which is just totally speaks to Chicago's neighborhood pride. That's awesome. Speaking to that, if you want to show a small business in your neighborhood some love, reach out to us at 773-780-0246. Leave your name, your neighborhood, and a small business uh, you want to put us on to. Stand on public resources, things that we love. We got to give some to our public libraries. Uh, These are places around the city of Chicago that are at the forefront of public goods. They're not just places that you can go and rent books, not just places you can go and take meetings or sit on the computer. Uh, But often there are places that uh, serve as warming shelters, places that provide public goods. I just read that a new pilot program is started at the public libraries, uh, that they're offering counseling services at four uh, individual libraries around the city, one in Edgewater, Mount Greenwood and Beverly. And then the one right by me in Blackstone. Uh, Carrie, I know you frequent the libraries uh, near your home. Just how important um, have they been for you? Yeah, I mean, I I think we all probably have talked about this and have similar experiences. We went to the library all the time growing up. Um, as kids, we went to the different bran- branches uh, where I grew up in Rockford. But yeah, I was just as you were listing like all those things that you do at the library, I was just thinking about the other day how I went to vote. Yeah, it must have been when I was, you know, we were voting in the runoff. One of uh, the libraries was one of the early early voting sites and there was this wood box and it said flag recycling and I was took a picture because I thought what is that and I it occurred to me like you know I was looking it up you're not supposed to like throw away a flag it's like considered desecration so this is like a literally like a plywood box (laughs) that you could put your flags in and I thought that is so emblematic of the library providing just about everything for you. And then like right behind it, of course, there are like, you know, stacks, dozens of different pamphlets for various events and, and stuff. Um, also, uh, the libraries were, they're always clutch, you know, for internet when your internet goes out or if you're uh, in those in-between moving stages where you don't have your new inter- internet yet. I realize that this ages me because now we all have smartphones and we can just use our iPhones, but not not all of us had all that all the time. <laughs> so some and, of and us not everybody got smartphones now. Yeah, and exactly. also sometimes exactly. there's stuff you can't do on a smartphone, especially when you're moving and you're like trying to deal with documents and stuff. Like totally. And the reason we're talking about libraries today because it's been announced that three neighborhoods are getting brand new library branches, including Back of the Yards branch is going to get uh, a new facility. It's going to replace the the one that's been at College Prep Academy for the last 10 years. Mm. Uh, And a lot of that's in thanks to a $15 million grant secured by State Representative Teresa Ma um, a few years ago. And they were going back and forth on where a new location will be. But what's interesting about this location, as well as the one that's coming to Humble Park, is that they're going to be a part of mixed-use facilities uh, or mixed-use development. So they'll have some residential uh, over in Humble Park. They're going to have a Latino cultural center. They're also going to have offices for Humble Park Family Health. Um, And then Woodlawn, they're going to get a brand-new $18 million uh, facility. There's no word if it will replace the the Coleman branch on 63rd. Um, But they also dropped some mock-ups that you can see um, of the facility coming to back of the yards and the one coming to Humble Park. And uh, they look fancy. Yeah, I think the back <laughs> of the yards they one look fancy. looks so cool. I think the back of the yards one, I have a feeling it's probably quite divisive because right. Uh, just to kind of describe it for <laughs> folks, uh, you know, it's, um, 
it's it's a series of squares sort of at different depths, right? And they're all kind of, it's almost like a, imagine a really pixelated image of a building. That's kind of mm-hmm. what it looks like in real life. Um, and it doesn't really look like stuff that you normally see, I feel like. It does feel very new, mm-hmm. very kind of- uh, Shiny. Uh, <laughs> shiny, a little experimental, um, but I'm into it. I'm here for it. I think it's really interesting. I think the Humble Park one is a little basic, but I really like the Back of the Arts one. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, when you think about it, libraries around the world, like they, they, some of them, you know, they are architecturally significant. Oh, yeah. And that is like, you think of like universities, like University of Chicago, you know, like they've got like a helmet yawn design library. So these are awesome and making great use of like the one in Humboldt Park is the old Pioneer Bank at North and Pulaski. So making use of that space. And I am embarrassed to say the current Humboldt Park Library is not that far from me at North and Troy. And I've never stepped foot in there. Um, and that's embarrassing. But this is this is this is just size wise uh, and like sort of programs that should be an improvement. Mm-hmm. I mean, on the, the mock ups that look on the inside, they look like the inside of an Apple store, particularly yes. on, at the back of the yards. But I will say, the one that's going to back of the yards is going to replace an old Aronson furniture building. Honestly, I, what's that that phobia like when I don't you know when it's like a bunch of circles or a bunch of squares oh when you're next afraid of what? small holes all next to each other yeah I don't remember the see. name of it there is a real phobia for that and I could see people getting that looking at this building because just the way the squares are positioned next to each other and in the mock up it's like there are people inside of them so I feel like if they're all packed the way that building would look like from the outside of just a bunch of people sitting in these little squares uh, to your point though we do have some really cool uh, like library designs around the city. Um, and so just to see these added, to see more uh, public resources put in there, the type, they say each one is going to have uh, resources for children, literacy programs, and it'll add to what already is a huge um, just wealth of information as well as events at the Chicago Public Library. We're constantly um, shouting out poetry events. Some of the dopest artists come through Chicago Public Library events. Um, And then anytime you go to one, people are happy to tell you where you can go, like, look at a 3D printer where you can go take Mm -hmm. art classes. Mm -hmm. Um, You can rent out magazines and video games. It's a it's it's a lot there, and I we always sleeping on you it. You can get tickets to like the like museums and stuff too. Like you can rent out instruments. Oh, good call! And DVDs, and mm-hmm. you can rent yeah different media. Do we know when each of these? are expected to open from what i've uh saw though some have said like the humble park branch hopes to break ground by 2024 open in spring of 2025 uh so we're still you know a year two years out from seeing the these projects finished but um uh, again if the mock-ups are any indication they look like they're going to be very uh sort of beautiful expansive places uh and they're here for all of us so again show some love to your local uh chicago public library branch We always tell you we want to hear from you, your story ideas, the local businesses you want to shout out, the neighborhoods you want to take us through. Uh, And we do hear from you. And you all really shared your thoughts on an episode from last week about deep dish pizza. Reminder, the three of us right now, we're pretty pro deep dish, but some of our colleagues, you know, y'all know who y'all are. Uh, Y'all are not. Uh, So we wanted to hear (laughs) about how some of y'all feel uh, about the deep dish conversation. Hi, CityCast team. This is Tom from Rogers Park. Um, I'm just calling in with a couple of perspectives on pizza. I'm in a couple of places uh, I just wanted to call out. Uh, first, uh, one of your uh, one of your callers mentioned Jet's Pizza, uh, which has a Michigander I thoroughly enjoy and has a good nostalgia factor for me. But uh, actually, my my go to recommendation for Detroit style pizza in the city is uh, Fat Chris's. Uh, they it's an excellent Detroit Detroit style pizza, and they also have some great appetizers, most notably Chubby's, which is kind of a cross between like a pepperoni pizza and a breadstick. It's like almost like a slice of pizza, like rolled up. It's absolutely delicious. And as an added bonus, they uh, import Fago Pop uh, from Michigan. So if you want your uh, your Red Pop or your Rock and Rye, you can definitely get that there, which uh, I always I always enjoy having a little taste at home that way. Um, and the other place I was surprised did not come up uh, is Chicago Pizza and Oven Grinders. Um, so that's in Lincoln Park. Uh, obviously not deep dish, but it's kind of like a pot pie kind of pizza. 
um, which like comes out and they, f- you know, flip it over because it's got the bread on top and they flip it over. And you got the cheese that was all melty and against the bottom of the, uh, of the, uh, you know, bowl, what it was cooking. It's a, it's a great experience. Uh, it's one of those kind of like dive places, uh, cash only, uh, you know, real dark kind of vibe. So in any case, uh, two more recommendations, Fat Chris's and uh, Chicago Pizza and Oven Grinders. Really appreciate it, guys. So, uh, uh, yeah, take care. I dude, Jets. Nah. Jets is good. <laughs> Did you, I think you Detroit, like it? I ain't going. Yeah, I I love I love Detroit style pizza, but the fat Chris's. Uh, yeah, that's a good one. And oven grinders. Yeah, that's more like sort of veers into the. Is it? Yeah, like is it stuffed? Is it deep dish? Yeah, okay. That's those. Those are great. I feel like an those oven grinder is like a sandwich, right? Like a pizza sandwich. <sighs> They've got a lot of stuff there. They've got a lot of stuff there. Yeah, it's in sort of on the border of Lincoln Park and, and Old Town. Okay, good one. I feel like this is the very edge of my pizza knowledge. Like I that's <laughs> I I am really kind of like in deep water now. Deep wish, deep water. Who knows? <laughs> so we also got some text from folks. Can you read a couple of those? Yeah. So we heard from a few different people who wanted to shout out their favorite places to get deep dish. Uh, Steve from Logan Square uh, said that he loved the deep dish episode, but that we could have mentioned a couple vegan options. Like many other cuisines, Ooh. the vegan deep dish selection has grown over the years. Steve says, I get mine at Kitchen 17 and used to go to the all vegan House of Zah back when they were still around. Carrie, are you familiar with either of these? You know, I know Kitchen 17, yes. And uh, actually, for s- just so Steve knows, and we'll put a link into it, uh, Hey Chicago last week had uh, our newsletter, had a list of some great Chicago classics that are available vegan, so plant-based Chicago classics. And Kitchen 17 was definitely on there. Actually, Polly G's is another place that does vegan pizza there. I've learned there are quite, um, quite a few options now for vegan pizza, like even whole foods, of course, will sell you some vegan pizza, but yeah, kitchen 17, I did know about. I think with vegan deep dish, I would be, I, 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 I'm a little suspicious of the cheese. I have to admit it. Like I, I, that's just, I, 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 I'm sorry. I I feel like, I feel like the, I feel like more people who've gone vegan push back on the cheese than any other thing. It's not the meats. It's it's not yeah oh, it's not like, like oh it's just not the same Jeez, yeah yeah mm-hmm. uh, Shannon Cooper from Printers Row says hey Citycast uh, just listen to your deep dish episode I got to give a huge shout out to the now closed Eduardo's stuffed uh, she says I know Ed- ah. I know stuffed isn't quite the same but if outer towners had it had this they would be converts growing up we used to go to the original location in Wheeling once a year with our dear family friends I'm Jewish and this was the meal we had to break our Yom Kippur fast. They grew fresh basil right there and served broken chips made of their cracker crust while you waited like an hour for the freshest, thickest, richest treat you could imagine on a wafer-thin, crispy crust. Bliss. Uh, And it's worth noting that we had another person uh, also mention Eduardo's, Joseph, uh, who is now living in Houston, but originally from Greater Grand Crossing, um, told us that uh, they still still have a location out in Hammond, Indiana Indiana, that, uh, that he would go to. I was gonna say where I had no I, I didn't know Eduardo's closed. Okay, but it it's I am on their website. Dearborn looks okay, like there's one there in is Dearborn. Still, yeah, there is still Munster. one downtown, and then and then it's actually Munster, Indiana. Yeah. Okay. Wow. Oh yes, I know where that one is on Dearborn. Wow. Okay, dude, this makes me want pizza. I really cra- was craving deep dish actually all week, and just like couldn't get it together enough to get up to Gino's or or to to get it. I but maybe this week. Stay tuned and find out if Simone gets deep dish. If you want to show some love to a small business in your neighborhood, your local public library, or you still got more thoughts on pizza, hit us up at 773-780-0246. Leave a text or a voicemail. Or also, you can follow us on Twitter or Instagram at CityCast Chicago. Uh, we want to see your thoughts. We want to read them. We want to hear them. Uh, so please send them along. Thank you again to lead producer Carrie Shepard, producer Simone Alisea. Uh, let's get out there and celebrate National Small Business Week.
Before I let you go, if you got six more minutes, head over to your inbox and read our daily newsletter, Hey Chicago, for the latest in news and events. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, subscribe now. It's the best damn newsletter in Chicago. You can sign up at chicago.citycast.fm. Make sure you put your friends and your family on, and while you at it, rate and review the podcast wherever you're listening. Five stars and a nice compliment like, you know, Jacoby. You really doing your damn thing. I appreciate you. That would really make my day. It, it really would. I'm going to be here bright and early tomorrow. I will talk to you then. Peace. Trypophobia. Trypophobia, is that it? Trypophobia. I looked it up. I also don't feel that way because it's squares and not circles. Like, I don't like honeycombs. Like, honey, like hives really oh. freak me out because of that because yeah. like, you're just afraid like bugs are going to come out oh those are gross I didn't realize it was an actual phobia I just always think it, I, I'm pretty grossed out by those too oh wow yeah. okay good good another another new phobia I have fantastic <laughs> <laughs>